patient journey um, begins with either the gastroenterologist who refer the patients into us. Um, oftentimes the work has, uh, has been done and they've had their endoscopy, they've had their esophageal gram, um, and we just really have to work with what we have. Sometimes it's not optimal because we're not the ones performing the endoscopy, so we actually don't see our anatomy before uh, the TIF procedure. It sometimes works better when the patient comes in from a primary care doctor and none of the workup has been done and we actually get to do our own workup and we can cater it to the patient. Traditionally uh, we look at a pH study and that can be done with either the Bravo system or the 24-hour pH catheter based um, system. We would like some motility study and the three ways of accomplishing that has been with um, the traditional esophageal manometry study. We do an esophageal gram also if the patients don't tolerate the probe associated with the manometry study. Uh, we brought on endoflip um, as a third option recently and that has been uh, very good for the patient because they're sedated, it's one stop, we put in the Bravo unit, we do endoflip and the workup is finished. Um, the endoflip technology has changed um, the experience for the patient pre-op. Um, the manometry catheter, the esophageal manometry, um, is sometimes painful and it can be traumatic uh, for the patient, they remember it. The TIF procedure, is approximately an hour procedure. Uh, we talk to the patient ahead of time as to what they expect. If they know what to expect, uh, outcomes will be good. They wake up and they have a sore throat, they know they're gonna have a sore throat, then they're gonna be okay with it. We like to keep the patient overnight. We send them home the next day. And we send them home with three to five days of clear liquids. And um, I give them a range because um, different patients tolerate different types of food differently. Mainly, I like safety, so I like to bear on the side of safety and not advance the diet too quickly and have uh, food stuck um, when they advance the diet too quickly. The second part of my uh, fairly rigid diet post-op is because I'd like to accomplish weight loss. And most of the patients come in, they're obese, they have GERD, and when we keep the weight down, the GERD is well controlled, they feel better, and so I use that weight loss as a benefit, an additional side effect actually that is beneficial for the patient. Um, after the first three to five days of clear liquids, we advance them to thicker liquids, blended soft, pureed, and they're back to a normal diet at six weeks. We see them scattered, um, depending on how they recover, we see them in the office at one to two weeks, um, four to six weeks, three to four months, and typically between six and 12 months, we'd like to do an endoscopy with a pH study uh, to check the valve, to see where they are, um, to have more of an objective um, comparison to where we were at baseline. We do have an activity restriction, and patients are asked not to do any heavy lifting and it's a five pound weight limit. Uh, we encourage them you know, to walk around, be fairly normal, just no heavy lifting. Um, we don't want them to undo the um, hernia if they had a hernia repair. The TIF procedure, in terms of the sutures that we place and the fasteners, they're pretty sturdy um, and we place so many. Um, we're not so worried about uh, breaking the fasteners, but for safety, it's about a six week recovery in terms of um, limiting the uh, weight that they lift.